Hello everyone, and welcome to the week 10 video status update for Nexus. I'm Alan Landau, and once again I'm joined by Andrew Bertino. I want to first apologize for not putting up a video status update in the last few weeks. Uh, we've actually been on spring break and going through the vertical slice process. We were successful in surviving that process, however, and we have since added six people to our team. So that is a very welcomed addition. Um, this week we're going to go through some of the new features that we have in game, including a traversal system and a new encapsulation of our power system, as well as looking at some concept art and talking about what we're going to be doing for the upcoming week. So now that we've hopped in game, you can see that we've maintained a lot of the systems that we had previously. We have some preliminary AI, as you can see our boar character still is in game, and we still have this exploration view as well as an action or aiming view. Um, however, our systems, as far as powers go, have changed slightly. We still have all of the same abilities, a push and pull, an add mass and subtract mass, uh, an ability to nullify gravity, but we've encapsulated all of these powers into a unique system that's, uh, that kind of balances one glob against another, so, so they communicate with each other. So in this example, I'm going to throw one glob on the ground right here at this marker, and as before, the boar is attracted to the light of the glob, so he comes over, and I'm going to throw another one on this column up here. As he gets into position, I'm going to actually make the two uh, attract towards each other and as you can see, smash the bore underneath. Now while this is a very preliminary version of, the, of this power set, you can see the implications and the different ways in which we can use that. And again, I, I will be demonstrating a couple more. As I, as I head over to this next section, we're going to uh, pop up our, our debug um, to try and explain a little bit of our traversal system. Now, the traversal system that we have in place is not, it, or it is dynamic. It's not preset. So, as you can see, Chris has these red rays shooting out from him. And basically what they do is they test to see if an object is scalable that is within distance of the character. So, this boulder right here has no preset handholds or anything to that nature. So, this system is completely dynamic. As I grab onto this wall, you'll be able to see the exact places of the handholds that are dynamically generated. This system does, again, need a little cleanup. This, there's a little pop and transition, but it's a great first pass, and it, it, it really allows for a lot of flexibility for the designers. Instead of saying, all right, every single handhold has to be a designated eight feet high or six feet or what have you, the designers are able to go in and not worry about that issue really at all. I mean, with this system, whether it be jumping across a, a gap to last second grabbing on to uh, the other edge, or simply climbing up these, uh, these pillars as I was just demonstrating, everything is done dynamically, so it really takes a lot of the stress off of the producers. Now I'm going to show another example of the power systems that we have. Again, I'm going to throw one glob on this boulder, or uh, on this column, and one glob on this column. And these two are set on a, a hinge system. So as I attract and repel them from one another, they actually will bounce off of one another and uh, kind of start some momentum up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to retract this one uh, away from the other as it goes by and it will provide me with a safe area to run through. This is another great example of how this power can be used. Um, we, we could set up an enemy here, uh, perhaps a swarm of enemies, and we could be engaged in a frantic chase, basically. And as we're running, we could effectively throw globs on these two walls and smash the enemies that come in between the two of them. Another example of the uses of this power are what happens when we don't attract or repel these two objects from each other, but instead apply them to the same object. 
So in this case, we have a boulder wall here, and I'm going to make the two repel away from each other, but because it's on the same object, it's actually going to break through the wall. One final example that we have set up for this demo um, is the null grab that we had spoken about before. This was a power that everyone seemed to love. It gave a great visual indication of what was going on. And so we really wanted to include that as well in, in this refined set of powers. Um, so as you can see here, I've thrown two globs on this boulder down here that I can see. And I'm going to, this time, make them both uh, attract towards one another. And in essence, that's going to engage the null grav power. and allow it so I can cross this bridge. So this is our first redesign section for Chris, our main character. We wanted to give Chris kind of a, uh, a more heroic viewpoint and uh, really express that in both his clothing and in this new power system. So as you can see here, uh, Scott Pellico drew up some character redesigns here with some options for what we're calling gauntlets. Um, and these gauntlets basically are going to be the thing that channels these powers. What we wound up deciding on was this system of shards is what we're referring to them as. And um, the, these are basically going to replace the globs that we have currently. Um, and by specifying these shards as a key point of the game, we're able to include them in things like enemy designs and also in the environment. So here you can see is a, con is a piece of concept art for one of the enemy classes that might appear. Um, this, is, this is a small ape creature that's been uh, manifested by these shards. And uh, in this next slide, you can see a larger, more brute-esque uh, type creature, which would be a, a gorilla. Um, and again, the shards are prevalent in, in that imagery as well. Another thing that we wanted to get to was um, this, this idea of kind of creepy enemies um, as well as alien enemies, so um, as well as a swarm mechanic. So we decided to go with spiders since that kind of uh, ha has a inflection point with a lot of people. Um, so here's our line drawing for it, and here is the uh, 3D model of it that we've composed thus far. Um, in the upcoming week, we're going to be texturing and UVing it, and um, hopefully we can get into, in, into the game by next week. Here is some uh, additional flora and fauna that we're going to have in the game, um, as well as a preliminary statue um, that's going to be part and parcel of a large uh, bridge section that we're going to be designing that hopefully we'll be able to show to you by next week. And that is, in conclusion, our uh, video status update for week 10 for Nexus. We appreciate you uh, viewing this, and uh, hopefully you'll come back next week and see what our updates are.